Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I'm sorry but we've lost again, that's another life down the drain and we're gonna have to start all over- oh wait a minute, <laughs> this video game just paid out! <laughs> Does it realise it's made a mistake? Oh actually no, it's meant to have done that, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com and these are 10 video games that actually rewarded you for losing, haha, <laughs> my day has finally come. Number 10, Spawn King Mickey by Dying to Certain Bosses, Kingdom Hearts 2. Now, Kingdom Hearts 2 is no picnic of a game, but if you find yourself struggling with some of its bosses, then Square Enix will lend you some aid direct from the House of Mouse. If Sora dies during certain boss fights throughout the game, you're given the option to tag in King Mickey Mouse, who will temporarily become the new player character, giving you another opportunity to wail away on the bosses. Mickey will stick around until he either revives Sora or dies himself, though given that Mickey generally isn't able to finish the bosses off, you'll need to get Sora back into the action at some point in time. Still, considering that Mickey is a mighty fighter, this is a massive help for those in trouble. Keep in mind as well that Mickey can show up multiple times per boss encounter, with the chance of him doing so increasing each time that Sora dies. Number 9. Get the Legendary Sword by Dying 16 Times – Alundra if you're getting your ass kicked in the cult classic RPG Alundra, which by the way is absolutely amazing and you owe it to yourself to play it, mm -mm -mm, it is good, you'll be allowed to unlock a weapon that trivializes every single fight in the game by allowing you to kill them in one bloody hit. If you've died 16 or more times and then quick restarted every time and gotten far enough in the game to have acquired the power gloves, well head to the statue of King Snow located west of Anoa Village and you'll be gifted the insanely powerful Legendary Sword. Hilariously though, the spirit of the king doesn't hand over the sword first without putting you down saying that it would be beyond heartless and cruel to deny you the sword after all that you've endured. Oof, ouch. Still, it's definitely worth taking the low-key abuse given that the legendary sword will let you basically cheese your way through the entirety of the rest of the game. Number 8. Get protective headgear after losing 100 times. Punch out for the Wii. Though the Wii version of Punch-Out is nowhere near as difficult as the original NES classic, it is still no pushover, yet players who are really struggling with it will get offered a much-needed olive branch. If you're playing badly enough to lose 100 fights in a row, then the game will take pity on you and mention that the Boxing Commissioner has sent you an interesting gift. Go to the Career Option menus and you'll find that a Headgear Assist item has been made available, giving players the very same protective headgear that's worn by Glass Joe in one of the game's fights. The headgear will drastically reduce damage taken in all matches and make it much, much easier to get through the career mode in one piece. Number 7. The Temi Armor Gets Cheaper With Each Death Undertale Temi Armor is the second most powerful armor available in Undertale and can be purchased from Tem's shop as long as you're not taking the genocide route, which leads you to the game's bad ending. You'll first need to unlock the item by paying 1000 G for Temi's shopkeeper's college scholarship, after which the Temi Armor will be made available for a stonking 9999 G. However, there's a very easy way to make that exorbitant price tag much, much more affordable. All you've got to do is just get yourself killed. Every single time that you die, even even across separate runs throughout the game, the price of the armor will decrease until after 23 deaths when it hits its maximum low of just 750 gold. Better still, this will apply even if you haven't actually paid the initial 1000 gold to unlock the armor yet. Number 6. Secretly lower the difficulty by playing poorly – Resident Evil 4 Adaptive difficulty may be a relatively common gameplay mechanic these days, but back when Resident Evil 4 came out, it was pretty niche. More to the point, while many games loudly broadcast their inclusion of such mechanics, Capcom actually kept this intentionally hidden below the surface of Resident Evil 4, and it was only made public knowledge through a strategy guide released more than a year after the game itself. As it turns out, no matter what difficulty you selected at the outset, the game has another internal difficulty scale which is adjusted depending on the player's skill. The game effectively grades your performance behind the scenes from 1 to 10, and so if you find yourself regularly taking damage, missing shots and getting killed, it will nerf enemies AI and attack power to compensate for this. Furthermore, you'll also be able to find more resources such as ammo in the environment, and if you get into major trouble, the game will actually make some enemies actually disappear entirely. The flip side, of course, is that the difficulty will ramp back up again if you start doing too well, so make sure that you don't kick too much ass on the upswing. Number 5. Getting the White Tanuki Suit After Dying 5 Times – Super Mario 3D World 
Super Mario 3D World isn't a massively challenging game, but it is one meant to be accessible to kids, and so Nintendo's terrific platformer does actually include a quick feature to help struggling players. If you die five times in any of the game's levels, you'll be presented with an assist block containing an invincibility leaf. Pick up the leaf and Mario will be transformed into White Tanuki Mario, rendering him near enough invincible for the rest of the level. Though some Mario purists will argue that the White Tanuki suit is an example of video game hand-holding gone too far, it is entirely optional. No one's forcing you to take it, and as we all know, options are a wonderful thing for a diverse player base, you monsters. But beware though, because while the suit does protect players from all enemy attacks, Mario can still die by falling off cliffs and into lava or poison water. Number 4. Restart the checkpoint fully healed by dying three times. Brothers in Arms, Road to Hill 30. So the Brothers in Arms games are no Call of Duty, and by that I mean that they will both test your skill and your patience given that there's no regenerating health nor any way to heal in the middle of action. This can result in players getting to a mission checkpoint with their squad in incredibly rough shape, and though this suggests an old school approach to difficulty where players may be too weak to reach the end and have to restart from the beginning, that's actually not the case. If you die three times, then the game will offer you a helping hand, allowing you to heal your squad and replenish your resources while continuing from your most recent checkpoint. Point. In effect, this basically negates the built-in anxiety of keeping a watchful eye on your resources, though reaching the end of the game is still no easy feat. Good luck. Number 3. Collect no turkeys on Thanksgiving Day race and unlock Starvin' Marvin. South Park Rally Ah, South Park Rally, one of the uh, many, many mediocre attempts to cash in on the success of Mario Kart 64. Not a great or even particularly good game by any means, but it's not particularly worthless either. It's a, it's a weird title. Anyway, the game's Thanksgiving Day race requires players to collect 20 turkeys scattered around the map and then be the first racer to ring the bell, but by actually doing the exact opposite of this, you'll find yourself gifted with a neat little reward. By not collecting a single turkey for the duration of the race, when a CPU opponent wins, you'll actually unlock the fan-favorite character, Starvin Marvin. Ironically, it's actually quite easy to collect a turkey without even realizing, so you're actually best off just by hiding in the level's barn, which the turkeys stay clear of. Number 2. Get Stealth Camo by Submitting to Torture – Metal Gear Solid Metal Gear Solid features a memorable mid-game sequence where Solid Snake is captured and tortured by Revolver Ocelot. An interactive sequence follows in which the player is required to resist the torture by relentlessly mashing buttons on their controller. It's a tough, thumb-blistering experience, albeit one where failure doesn't actually result in a game over. Rather, failing to resist Ocelot's torture will later lead to the bad ending where Meryl dies, but upon rolling the credits, you'll be given arguably the game's best item, Stealth Camouflage. You can now start the game with this camo, which will render you invisible to all non-boss enemies and cameras, making challenging parts of the game on an initial playthrough hilariously trivial on the second go-around. But if you do have the might to survive Ocelot's torture, you'll still get the good ending where Meryl lives and instead receive the bandana, which grants Snake infinite ammo for subsequent playthroughs. Or sorry, it should be infinite ammo. The stealth camo is just so much cooler though, so actually letting Meryl die is arguably the best thing to do? Ooh, that doesn't feel good to say. And number one, join the Human Plus program by getting into massive debt, Armored Core. Armored Core offers up a huge incentive for players to play badly and get themselves into tons of debt. If you keep failing missions and generally play poorly enough to end up with a debt of more than 50,000 credits, a cutscene will play which reveals that you've been selected to join the Human Plus program. This effectively results in the game restarting, but with all of your previously unlocked upgrades still available. Hell, players are able to abuse this a whopping eight times to ensure that they eventually restart the game with every ability on offer, including a fully kitted out radar and enhance speed, energy, and power. By basically allowing players to exploit a backwards reward system, this of course nerfs the game's difficulty quite considerably, ensuring that even the most inept Armored Core players will eventually make it through the campaign in one piece. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video games that rewarded you for losing. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, which has got its own Twitter now, which is L-A-L-D Tweet. Go and follow us there, and you can find out all updates about our board games and live streams. But before I go, my friend, I just want to say one thing. Even though we detailed today a lot about video games that rewarded you for losing you, my friend, listening to this video, you are not a loser. You are a big leg and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. I want you to go out there and absolutely smash your goals today because you deserve love, happiness, and success. Big love from me to you, my friend. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.